I feel like a fucking boomer. Where's my where's the USB? Hey, does everybody hear what this USB is? Ultimate Sri Ram something. Ultimate Sri Ram <laughs> When you start thinking about RDA. <laughs> oh man. RDA it makes me want a USB. <laughs> USB. When I see Saj Eliab improperly doing a heel hook, oh man, totally USB. Mm. When I see Timor Bazoya losing the qualification round, oh, oh, USB. Hello, welcome. This is hello with the comrades. I'm Comrade Ed, and this is Comrade Seth, and we talk about wrestling in the world and freestyle and that's the podcast now we're starting mm -hmm. all right so what i just looked at recently was um edward gregorov so i think salim kind of had a rough end of 2018 you know where he lost his old ush back off before everyone knew his old ush back off was super cool and threw people and good people not just you know turkmenistan's 57 kilo 61 rep but uh Ever Gregorov beat Salim Khan Abakarov, who's a two time placer at Nationals, who was the guy coming into Russian Nationals this year when, when his off came back and won it and was a runner up. But um, he beat Abakarov there. He's a runner up to Abiskazi Magomedov in the Intercontinental Cup uh, back in 2018. So he's going to be wrestling for Poland moving forward. And here's the thing he is Yakut Polish. So what that means is when the Soviets took over Poland, there's this mass exodus of ethnic Poles into Siberia. So that's how he has actual, you know, uh, Polish roots. So he can that's do so that because he has hair. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mass deportation is really just a fun little tidbit. You know, happens I know all sometimes. about it. Yeah. The diaspora. It's, it's, it's so, diaspora. You know, it's like Ash, it's Asheville with a silent H. So I tell everybody when they come into North Carolina. You're going to Asheville? Yes, yes, absolutely. What are you going to do there? Climb, climb the mountains of Asheville? Absolutely. Well, I can't wait. But um, we've got the Oregon in, oh, well, I'm always on military time. So a little, about two hours and 20 minutes or so. So the weights that we got um, are 57, 61, and 70 which are very good. And we have Vito Arugia rep in the USA at 57. So let's look at who he has first round because it's a it's a doozer. Or I don't know, that's not a word, but it's really tough. And we talked we talk about him um, like about a month ago. Savanov, mm -hmm. what he did at the uh, Milan's, where he just, he beat Don DeCool Kreshel pretty convincingly. He should have beaten back or Demi Bot. If they they should have counted that duck at the end, you know, that, that was honest. Yeah, like that was a takedown. There was all points of contact were there. And then what did he do to Gam? I saw it. you had the highlight where he fireman Gamzatov and literally put him through the floor. Remy Remy's Gamzatov, Russian national champ. Correct. So yeah. we can say Vito's got the juice. Sure, you know he beat Idrisov. I mean. Was there a huge jump in production from Idrisov after Junior Worlds? Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But was the talent level there before? It's hard to tell because he's at that transitional stage, age-wise and competition, to where you can have those huge jumps and be a completely different guy over a span of a couple of months. Whereas once you get into your late 20s, even early 30s, that doesn't really hold up anymore. So I don't really think Idrisov's the same guy, but we also know that Vita's a really strong uh, international talent. He also is Man. inconsistent throughout competitions. Like, he'll have a really strong semifinal and then just look completely different in the finals. So he's hard to get a read on, I mm. think. I think it's oh, his weight cut, honestly. I think it gets it. to him. He's way too... Mm, he could be. I don't know. I could ask Yanni. But well, uh, my perceived thing is it's just... I think he loads up too much during the lead up to the tournament, and then finals are just sort of a "what am I going to do" type thing. Because he could be, he could have beaten that Japanese kid. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. You beat Akman Idrisov, like what was it, nine one? You yeah. can be. I can't even remember his name. 
Yeah, Idris Off is really good. So Who's just it, for uh, reference, talk about Nakamura was that it? Who he yeah. beat? Oh, he uh, lost to rather. I forget. Oh, dude, <laughs> just check. I want to say it's Abe. One of the two. Is there any good Japanese kids we need to know about right out of the gate? At Eureka. Oh, did we say? Did we say Higuchi cut down to fifty-seven? He did. Well, oh. Yeah, we did, we did that happened um, at the end of the um, year. So it, it happened before we, um, after we did our last one. So Ray Higuchi, the Olympic runner-up from 2016 at 57, has fluctuated a bit. But last year he beat uh, the 2018 world champ, uh, Takuto Origoro. He's back at 57. We have him ranked number, um, number three. And the thing with him is he beat 2017 world champ Yuki Takashi in the final. To- Toshiaya Abe. Yeah. That's who Vito lost That's... to in the finals? Yeah, this was back in August. And then gotcha. um, this document decided to spend the rest of fall knocking off the best guys in the world. And then it just sort of just became like at a point where it's like, it's not really knocking them off so much as he is legitimately one of the best in the world. Um, let's see. Well, we are going to do bracket. DRL because there is... Well, wait, let's cover DRL because it'll take all of five minutes because there's oh. Cuban... It's basically just a Cuban dual meet. It's just a... So you see... Um, Pino Hines and Lopez wrestling again. <laughs> here's the Pino Lopez. It's just result-oriented. I, I wouldn't watch it again, to be quite honest with you. There wasn't even a gut. Even by, like, Greco heavyweight standards, there wasn't much production. So the important match, the whole duel, that needs to be rewatched, uh, especially moving forward for choice of qualifier, is Andre Ortega uh, beat Yal's Bonnie Rodriguez, like, 8-4. Like, uh, underhook throw by Bonnie Rodriguez, high flared him twice, but messed up on one of them. And they called the reversal on the first one. And then it's just a feat to back for um, Andre Ortega in the second one. And they just held on and wrestled smart and beat him 8-4, so I mean, that's that's a kid that's a two-timer at the U23 level mm-hmm. taking out YBR, who's not been got great exponentially lately. <laughs> literally peaks for like one tournament, but that still takes a lot of talent to beat even yeah. like a off level of him. So I want to get right into who we're going to be looking at for 57 because we're already right out of the gate with that with Vito and um, Ahmed. So Ahmed's going to have Zandan Bud, Santa Bazaar Zandan Bud, He's who good. was a Asian Championship runner-up at 61 back in 2017. So if we look through, his, he's going to have... He's got a good little run there. Yeah, he, he should be fine. First what, what's tough guy. Are they on different sides? Um, how many guys are in the bracket? Twenty. There's thirty guys in the bracket. Are you looking He's at my the bracket right now? Because Chitrin's probably going to be his guy in the semis. Yeah. All That's things. Probably his next toughest match after that. Yeah. Chitrin is definitely going to be the toughest one. That guy's horsepower is insane. His reattacks, ridiculous. He. Bulldoze his games of tough whenever they meet up. On the subject of games of tough, so he's got Abu Bakar Mutaliyev first it's round. Rough. And games of tough, we've watched them in the past where it's like it's pretty defensive minded, exposure oriented. Uh, and that's, I don't, and he's able to beat Muslim Saj Alive back at Nationals, but I don't know how well that holds up um, against an ever improving Mutaliyev who's his attack rate is world. He beat Gilman recently, right? He's beaten him twice. He beat him at um, the Intercontinental and then in Vladikovkaz. So, like, he's very good. The thing about everybody saw it, Mateo Pelican, fixed got fifth, lost to lose, an Asian championship runner up at 61. Prison strength, Joe Cologne. um, He put it on Stefan Micic a little bit, which is... It's January. I don't really I'm care. It's the Olympic. But I do care because it makes me look bad when yeah. I'm not going to stop hyping up Michigan wrestling. But that sure hurts. Because I don't know what they did with it, but Gilman's like, 
I can't stand guys that wrestle for other countries. That's lame. Like, well, um, that's how the rest of the world works. You said yeah. something about, like, you're American now. Like, you can't represent the country of your origin. Like, you, like, mm-hmm. it was the opposite of go back to where you came from. Don't really understand it's, it. Just stay where you're at. Just, just <laughs> like, thanks. Uh, uh, contextually, uh, eat shit. Mm, I don't know. But it's tricky stuff that he did well. I mean, he's got enough of a body of work to stay top 10. But, like, how do I say this? 57 at the U.S. is very good. But I have, this isn't rude, but I prefer watching international 57. You know? Yeah. It's just, like, I don't, I don't, see, I have enough resources. I don't have to care about whatever the hell this guy says. Because it's like, I've got better options, to be quite honest with you. Spencer Lee is coming for his ass anyway, domestically. Exactly. And I don't have to deal with, how about you just stay here, bro? How about you just stay? I'm like, "Hmm." okay. Spencer Lee plays Pokemon. He loves Takuto Nogura. He texts everybody. His mom is French or something. The only guy he didn't text at National (laughs) was Nathan Tomasello. And Nathan Tomasello is literally like a thumb. And he's wrestling really well right the now. High he's beating people up. NATO is. <laughs> NATO? Oh, yeah, he's great. He NATO's made the finals great. with Seth Gross and Spencer Lee. What are you going to do? I thought he'd do better against Gross, but that's also not. Does NATO <laughs> can be high volume, but NATO, secession-wise, being able to change shots that don't put him in a danger position exposure-wise, because NATO is strong enough usually against everybody else he wrestles. To where being put out of position is not a big threat. Right. But higher level guys who can... And anytime you're doing an outside step stuff, there's always a threat of an exposure if you get stuck down there, if you don't finish quickly. And if you have a guy like Seth Gross who just lock, who's able to get a lock on something, forget about it. You know? Forget about it. Forget about it. NATO, forget about it. FBI. <laughs> Wait a minute. He's an FBI, isn't he? Yeah, of course. It, really? It was Frank yeah, Pirelli. What was messing up about him was he was like this, like super wide, but then like he's a, he's a short guy, so I don't know why I expected it to be any different. But his voice is really high. Like I'm not going to make fun of it because probably people from Ohio State listen to this, but they know. He seems it's, like a sweet guy. Like I've never heard a bad word out of his mouth. A potty word? I don't. I don't think. No, he's, he's very wholesome. Very wholesome fellow. He just seems so intense. You expect him to be a dick, but he's not, from what I can see. Okay. He needs to rebrand. What if we got? Listen to this. What if we got Ali Abdul Aziz as a social man, social uh, his Twitter manager? Yeah, that's 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 the move. If you really wanted everyone to think, the bad thing is, shit, the, the, the it's so bad. That I literally thought that a guy getting hacked, Kamara Usman, welterweight champ at the UFC, getting hacked was just his manager being a shithead on his account. Like, normal. that's how bad it is. Business is usual. What did he say? I want to, I, I like Conor McGregor's on wife. wife. On gang. I'm like, M-word. on gang. <laughs> and then here's, I was like, oh, this, this is alley content. Okay, this is kind of crude. I'll never but say I can M-word, see. though. I can't remember a time he said the N word on somebody else's Twitter account. Yeah, that's really, that's, that's basically a one stop shop to cancellation. <laughs> but I was like, I mean, I could see this happening. It was, it was inevitable. And then I saw here's uh, fifty likes, and I'll give out Kamara Usman's like routing number for his bank account. I'm like, wait a minute. Do you like a? Uh... Dundik Ul Koresh Ul to come out on his his side of the bracket if he beats Vito. On his side, because he's got uh, Tiskayev, Vito, uh, Dandinov, and he's kind of the big fish in my opinion. He, you think he's the big fish there? In the bottom half, unless it's Vito. The big Maybe fish I'm underestimating. is the bottom. I don't even know him. Look, Tell me about him. <laughs> Alexander Savanov. Tuskayev, who, who beat um, Zavor back in 2017. Like, have, did, did you ever look up that match that they had in the uh, Alon's finals in 2017? 
I don't watch back wrestling. Back when had come. You do. I know you do. <laughs> back when Zavor had. Um, like, so Zavor came out of nowhere. Won your Egan. Bronze at Yudogu. Bronze at Euros. Won Nationals. And then lost Sandeep Tomar at Worlds. And it was just sort of a head scratcher. But. To Skyev had lost to Mago Medrasul Idrisov, who at the time, you know, we knew so, Idrisov was kind of okay, because at the end of 2016, him and Agoya were in the Intercontinental Cup Finals. They wrestled Agoya for one, but um, to Skyev had some good production from the early part of the uh, of the mid, the 2010s, but nobody really expected him to do what he did in, in 2017. So he beat Idrisov, and then he just he dominated. Um, Zavor, like just it was not, it was ridiculous what he did to him, and then he's been up and down a bit since. But he's coming off bronze at the Alans where he beat Mudaliev, like behind him. We talked about this last time, so right. he's got Rasul Kaliev, and then he's got the winner of Vito, who's a junior world runner up, all American for Cornell, and Sabanov, who is bronze at the Alans, who. Beat Donda Kulkarashu, who should have beaten or Denny Bot. They should have counted that duck at the end. And he blew, he just destroyed Gamzatov. So I can't think of a. If Vito even gets out of his qualification match, and he'll probably make and the finals. Round 16. He, he'll, he'll be, be fine on the bottom side. If he can be yeah. wrestling at that level, and unless something crazy happens from Donda Kulkarashu that we don't that we haven't seen in a while. I mean, I feel good about him, but that is literally the toughest path you can get. I mean, looking on this side, uh, damn, Dinoff, Koreshul. It should be Koreshul. You can take that. I mean, he's more consistent. What did you see from damn Dinoff when you're breaking down his tape? Uh, he like. gets exposed Stanley. a lot. <laughs> but he's he also against like an American. Really? Yeah, that's He's getting rolled through one stuff a lot. That's what I saw. For a long silly stuff. Uh, not it was it was crafty. It wasn't he wasn't getting hit by cheap stuff. But I mean, I expected him not to get hit by those things, and he did. What's his What's his shot selection? What's he doing? I think he's extending. I think he's extending on stuff, and he's coming up to the body and stuff like that. And he's like, maybe it was like over eagerness to get to the body lock because he was getting like rolled through in those kind of situations where he's like kind of off his base grabbing the body, and then they're yeah. taking him through that way. But I don't know. Maybe it's just that he's okay, not that so, good with the stuff. Um, from what it sounds like, yeah, from what it sounds like, I'd probably just sort of two gritty guys. i go with Koresh Ul. So yeah. if anybody, if, whoever comes out between Tuzkaya, Vito, and, and uh, Sabanov, I mean, that's going to be insane bottom side. And then Indrasov has... Finals. Who's Indrasov's side on the top again? Let me see. Um, I mean, we, we picked him against Tutrin is probably the semi. Tutrin? Yeah. Yeah, unless Tutrin um, just really comes out on fire, which I mean, it wouldn't... Could happen. be crazy. It could happen, yeah, absolutely. Tutrin so is... Good, but not as good as 65 or 74. Yeah. I'm looking here. So the two quarters... Oh, he did get topside. Ugh, that sucks. Chitrin's on the same side. As Idrisov? Yeah. I'm trying to look here. So his bout number is 11, and then he's got Narmadak, and then in 21, he's got Burian. And then 33 is the winner of Gamstov Mutaliev. So bout 22 is going to be on 33. It's a long bracket, man. But yeah, I think that's okay. Are you looking at the bracket right now? Yep. Okay, so what do you have for it? Because what I'm looking at here with how they divided it up, they're gonna do all these long ones. I see and... the line yeah. under fourteen. So I think top half is fourteen up, and bottom half is fifteen. Okay, down. that's what. Okay. So Gamza top is the beginning right of of the second half. Oh god! I, if he beats Munaliyev, I mean, but I would be really not surprised at all for Munaliyev to beat him. So let's move on to fifty. Let's move on to seventy. 
Because is that a bracket? That's a bracket. David so, Bayes. The boy, the boy, Nothing. Chairman Valiev. Young, Top seed. young King Dave is there. It has their date of their well, year. I, feel, of I don't know if he was, if they just gave him the top seed. Yeah, I don't know if they just gave him the top seed or if just they're expecting Bayef to um, slot in at like 74, to be honest with you. It's a good bracket, but, though. So, Chairman Valiev at the top. Uh, it's a good bracket. It's a good bracket. Oh my god. Look at the quarter. Bayef to Vyef quarter. It's just. It's Bottom ridiculous. half seems a little light. They have Ganzerig. They have Evgeny Zerbayev. Yeah. That Zerbayev. Yeah. Oh, Tereshenko's not too bad. Honestly, Tereshenko's not bad. He beat. Oh, I can't remember when he beat Kular, but he beat him somewhere. Oh, okay. It wasn't age group either. It was a senior level. The top half. Top yeah. half stacked here. Kasimov, Sequoia, Valiev, Bayev. Yeah, where you have Chairman Valiev and Enzo Sequoia on one side. Um, and then you're going to probably have a SEBI between them again, which is ridiculous considering how it went at the Alans. And then uh, Enzo Sequoia. Oh, I don't really know about it. This no, he's gonna get confusing me. So it's just it's, straight bracketing, but it should be what it is. So Bolivia David Mongolia, and then Abdul Agazi yeah. and Zakoyev, and then he wrestles the winner of that. And it's Kasimov. Did just just, just yeah. make sure to watch. Just make sure to watch Bayef. So Kasimov Bolivia. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. So um to vice number three, Americans watched him destroy Frank Molinero. But, um, you know, here's the thing. He also won the Sergeesian at 65. He also, and here's why he's so high. And this is still a guy that, he's bronze at the Seminoff because he lost Alan Gagayev. Won the Intercontinental, and he won the Kunaev. And who do we want to think that he beat there that would get him a top five spot? Who competes in tournaments around the Kazakhstan area? Who could it be? At 70? Probably, uh, is it? Yeah, at 70. Uh, Kai, Kai Sanov? Is that their Kazakhstan Kaipanov? guy? No, with, it, with an S. <laughs> Kaipanov at the end of the year was probably like... Well, Kaipanov at the end of the year did go 74. Hey, um... I don't know if we should mention it now, but Karimi lost in uh, the right. end, club cup to Jalili. Jalil or is it Jalil? I think Jalali? Jalil. Something like that. Jalali. 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 A new FBI oh, has emerged. Jalali. <laughs> oh, God. So nobody. Oh, lost to nobody. Not a nobody, but that's not like... Like, I can see Kurban Aliyev losing in, like... Magomed Kurban Aliyev is a mental picture of what he looks like. We all know he's very good, but... You know, he... I can understand why he loses in, like, off-season sort of stuff. Because he gets fat and kind of happens. Because he's got... He's he's 66... he's He's a 143 and a 160s weight. And he still does really well. But, like... Karimi? Oh, yeah, that guy's solid. And he's Iran. He was before Mohammadian came out, he was Iran's best option at 97. Can right. we agree on that? Absolutely. We thought he I mean he was given he wasn't given Jaden Cox matches, but he he beat the shit out of Sherry Bob, which is <laughs> important. <laughs> everyone else. Everyone else just gets smacked by him. And when he did go up to 97, he'd be like, oh Ibrahimov. Slap. Just smack he everyone. gave uh he gave Sajalayev some not he didn't really give him matches but he he was not easy to tech. <laughs> he didn't get He's strong. Place. He was like five. Yeah, he's so strong. But Mohammadian is much yeah, faster. He, he's something else. And his swing single and his transitions from there he's are intense. insane. He's Everything wrestle through. That. Did F? Mm, yeah, and then. With Bo, when he, when Bo kept wrestling through, because Bo's not used to guys being able to do that to him, where 
you're getting a go behind and he transitions with from that single and just dumps it at that way with the speed he has and kyle was oh kyle just got how many times did you see kyle snyder bullied around on the mat every, every in... time they touched <laughs> yeah but <laughs> every else... time you kyle would start here it'd be over here by the time it ended and like I think that Kyle, was the most dramatic like, beating of Kyle Snyder ever. Like, yeah, he got pinned by Sajid Lyle. Didn't beat him up that much because it was quick. It was quick. You maybe yeah. could have said, "Well, it was a momentum thing." Like, Mohammadi and literally just yeah, just beat him up, and then hushed you in nine zero. And he's just got good hips, but I'm like, that's really tough. And uh, oh my gosh. Just, Kyle monster. couldn't even get in any of his shots. Do you remember that? Like Kyle would be on his knees because Mohammadian's hips, he's so fast, they're already backing out. And he'd be working him over. It was that was Kyle Snyder's not bad. He's a three time world Olympic champ, but I've never seen him him just get it was similar to the the Sheriff Bob match where he was getting countered, but it was just so much more intense and dramatic when it was happening. You made it count for a lot more. It happened and, once the Sharipov match, where like yeah. Sharipovs were more like to, just to you know get some breathing room because you have like two hundred thirty two yeah. pound, yeah, piece of Maryland muscle just trying to beat your skull in. Whereas Mohammadian is like he's an actual tank, like that right. guy's like anti aircraft is what he is. I don't know. Actually, do I know what he was on? Fun fact, he came back from a four-year drug suspension. <laughs> that was his second, co- third competition back. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. He's clean I'm now, but he learned his lesson. <laughs> <laughs> clean. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> uh, speaking of clean, John Hack, he has one of the highest totals in weightlifting ever. It's like mm, almost 900 kilos. He's about 198. He just broke 2,000 pounds. He's, uh, no. <laughs> he literally said, he said, there was some podcasting guys were like, oh yeah, people don't really respect the work that people do on steroids. And they gave this, this voice, but like, it's, you don't even train as hard as me. And I'm on steroids. I don't be as strong as you mean. And like John, one of the strongest men in the world, he legitimately just told you is on steroids, and it's boosted his training so much because it was on. He's on SARMs, which are selective androgen receptor modulators, which they don't ha- quite have. So when you get off steroids, you have all these negative androgenic effects. Where there's, uh, let's see this. There's shrinkage. And there's all these other negative things associated with steroids. SARMs don't do that, but they're very clearly uh, illegal. But because um, the federation that he's in doesn't test, you basically do what you want. But then he's like saying right after, I'm like, I think most guys are natty. Honestly, I'm not one of them. <laughs> Just, this is so stupid. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it, I, I don't. It would be weird if wrestling was that transparent. It, it would make me uncomfortable. I would rather. <laughs> Maybe everybody secretive instead yeah it's just it's it sounds stupid when it's like you have dude bros trying to say like uh yeah i mean artificially pumping your body full of testosterone isn't gonna it's not gonna make you that much stronger to be honest with you me yeah i mean just doing estrogen blockers too no fat burners do, do some clan <laughs> no brother it's all it's just hard work and the steroids i'm like Here's a chemistry lesson. Uh, you're fucking stupid. All right. But back to that, we just went over 70. So we think Zerbayev Bayev is going to be the semi. But how much do you think Tobayev could give Bayev a match just off of how he him? He might not get teched. That's kind of how I'm feeling right now. They can, can go up and down. And he's working his way up early. to 74. So he's probably strong as hell right now. What did he walk? Did Bay walk around? Didn't he say like he walks around like seventy six? He was light. He was light for seventy. So we all thought he was going down sixty five, but he's not. Yeah, but he's lean. He did light for seventy when you're lean is heavy. It's essentially the same thing because it's still it's more body composition. Like oh, Rashid Kerbin off. Oh my god, he'd be like at, he was eighty six the month after, like 
70 kilo worlds where he beat James Green because he was literally just this titan. Didn't do anything, but like he's just so physically large, you could do nothing. It's gross. No, who many? How many people do you know go from 86 to 70? Not 70 to 86. 86 to 70 for one tournament. People don't forget that. It's disgusting. It's a Kenny reverse. Florian. Kenny Florian. Yeah, Kenny Florian I mean, like, went from 185 pounds to 145 pounds. That's like the same thing, right? That might be uh, more. Extra 10 pounds. Um, don't worry. My uh, methods instructor had the same issue, and it took 10 minutes for her to realize the conversion. Oh, converting from kilograms? Kilos. <laughs> to, uh, yeah, it was... I was like, well, I'm 220, and if you take that, and then you divide 90, that. 98 two, kilos. Two, 100. 100 kilos is 220? Because 97 is like, what, 213? 213, yeah. Kilos aren't that bad. You just need to realize if they're, they're heavier. That's literally the only principle. I only know them what they are in wrestling weights, and I don't know anything else. Well, I I'm have to see. i kilograms. Uh, weight. Really? That's yeah. pretty nice. I'm going to go 57, though. Actually, I don't want to show 63. <laughs> yeah, you, you could wrestle at Pitt. You definitely could do it. I don't you know. Beat Lewis, Lewis Newell is pretty good. I don't think I beat him out for the spot. Mickey Phillippe, though, he'd go rush and tie on me, and I'd just uh, wait for him to trip, and I'd, I'd catch his leg. Hit him with the RBY at NCAAs. I don't think I could uh, make it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could I make guess. Italy's lineup though. GV's on the on the downswing. <laughs> Is he? Maybe. Oh yeah, Seriano's gonna <laughs> Seriano Seriano's gonna be <laughs> God. I hope he does. Uh, I'm, I'm, Just to make Flo mad. Is he North Jersey? Is he North Jersey or South? He's like he is North Jersey. Bergen Catholic is North Jersey, but he's at Rutgers, so he mm. should be in Central Jersey right now and close enough to the Princeton. New Jersey Regional Training Center, which is near Princeton. So, but I don't think he's like officially yeah, part goes, of it. He goes to um, he's a college athlete. He goes, he goes to, to Is there like an Edge yeah, like wrestling club or something like that? I think Edge. I think just Edge goes out of NYC. So that's like where Steve. Really go. Bosak coaches up there. Something random like that. He probably gets around. But yeah, I would. Yeah, I would exactly be surprised if he went to NYRTC. Yeah, he goes there. I've seen him a bunch of times. Okay. But I was just wondering if, if they have like a citizenship requirement exam for Italy where it's like, hey, this is the pasta. What do you what do you do with it? <laughs> I think Shimizu is she means was probably recruiting him. Instead of instead of like actual Italian, they just they speak in Napolitan, like uh the Sopranos. It's that simple. Like pigeon English. You don't even have Italian. to be Italian. Uh, it really is. It's honest to God, the same thing. But you just gotta talk like this. It's super easy. You just you shove your hands in people's face and have you know strongly held beliefs and opinions about uh, progressive values because they're dumb because they're not like the old country. And if your mother saw this, she'd be disgusted. You disgust. I you, you bottomed out like that. It's so easy. The minute, I, the minute I cross the Mason Dixon line, it's on. <laughs> it goes from that to this. Or it's just, I, I hit a tall room, like, yeah, here's my fucking money. All right. He's fucking looking at you. I'm in a car. You're you're in a fucking booth. Put two and two together. I'm out of here. Vroom. And I'm, it's that easy, Ed, but that's why I don't go up north that much. It, it, you would have a lot so of fun long. being Italian in South Philly. That's like all people do here is be it's... Italian. Easy. It's, I just do that at tournaments the whole time. People think it's great. I'm just like, oh, oh, would you look at that? I, that's all I do. And then I actually give like coaching to my guys. But the rest of the time, I'm like, hey, look at that guy. Whoa, oh, ooh. Just, I really do. You can ask people. It's what. It's all I do. Um, they they would never think that I do. Um, would we say I'm the best at coverage? Number one, Creating. number one, and unopposed. I would no. say. Number one, burger friends. Top the news. Top burger. Top ranker. Top news. <laughs> top news burger friends. <laughs> so uh, but, uh, no, you, you have to be 
don't get people's hopes up too high. You have to be opportunistically intelligent so that they don't expect too much out of you. So they're always impressed. My strategy. That's the point. So. Can I back to work in these Uregan brackets? It has only yeah. for seventy kilograms. Oh, it has it for all the weights. It has the the year they were born. <laughs> Fantastic, isn't it? But who is the youngest person at fifty seven? We have a couple two thousand. Sabinov is two thousand. Ooh. Well, we'll just see whoever finished up their junior eligibility. Josh, um, there, Josh well, Queen, Seren is, Hervey is 2001. He's winning right now. Look at Mongolia. Virgin Jav Yadam. Virgin Jav Yadam is at 61. 2002. Wow. Yeah. Look at how Child. old Bogomoyev is. <laughs> Bogomoyev's 1989. Jeez. He's a fossil. He's a boomer in this bracket. He really is a boomer. Hey, look at um. So let's get right into the sixty-one because I'm looking at it right now. Abbasgazi yeah. Magomedov, who beat Abakarov, who had been giving, who beat him at the DRL. We talked about Abakarov at the beginning of the program, but um, Abbasgazi lost to Bogomoyev at Russian Nationals. Disappointing. Okay, and then Bogomoyev lost to Fursaliyev at Russian Nationals five four. Bogomoyev is a three-time national champ. Okay, then Bogomoyev got tacked in the bronze medal match. By Denis Slamtaktarov, who's no longer with us because he went up to 65. So we've got all that covered. But that's going to be a really big semifinal match between the two because Abbas God's clearly turned a corner and he's been one of Russia's best talents all the way back to like at the junior level when he beat Makir Amir Slanov at Euros, the junior Euros, when Makir was still putting in work. So like, I really want to see that because we've got, it may not seem that way in the rankings, but things are like that. Abbas God's is number three. Bogomor is number 12. Math may not line up, but uh, they're both very good, and that's basically the match you want to see. Now, right at the gate of the bottom half, outside of first Ilyev and Abdurakmanov, who else is there? Or Denny Bot is eight. Wrong or Denny Bot? Is a different one. guy? Shamil Omarov. Tug, yeah, Tug Shamil Omarov. <laughs> Never mind. Let me see. I mean, I was Gadzi Magomedov, Verzaliev, Bogomoyev, uh, Omarov. Is he any good? He's the he's the Alon's bronze medalist, dude. Okay, he's kind of good. Mag- and Mag- Mag- then Ikromov, I don't really rate from nope. Tajikistan. Or I don't think he's much. Wait, but wait. number number twenty, uh, Muhammad Ikromov. He's not uh, really. Ikromov, I don't care. Yadam, nope. Uh, Bayashikolonov, nope. Don't know. Syrian was a 2017 Russian Nationals bronze medalist where he beat Badruddin off in the bronze medal match. He also beat um, Idrisov in a good one. Um, mm-hmm. And then Ch- Chimba was fifth at Russian Nationals, beat Sabanov, when Sabanov was still kind of a junior, not as good. Um, Syrian was also the Russian national runner up in 2014. Kadartsev is a junior world medalist. He's the nephew to Mark Kadartsev. Is Ed, can you do me a favor, real quick? Look up how many titles Mark has, so I, so we don't, I don't use as much time. You know what I'm saying? Spell it for me. <laughs> Mark Kadartsev. Mark Kadartsev. Uh, is he in this bracket? Can I just look at his name spelling? Oh, McVark? No, oh, he's, he's retired. He's also it's Ali Kazartsev. Malik is McVark's nephew. So Malik was bronze at Junior Worlds this year or last year. So he's not bad. But I mean, if you're a Russian junior, probably going to have some standout tournament at some point in time. I would hope. Who are, who are our biggest junior letdowns? Most of them. Anybody? <laughs> oh, Aaron Pico. Georgi Gorgaev. Oh, sorry. Were we going to say the same thing? No. Okay. So, here's the thing. First, Aliyev has Abdurakmanov, who's the Intercontinental Cup champ. First, Aliyev's the number one ranked guy in the world right now after winning the Alons. And I'm He's pretty cool. sure... Yeah, Abdurakmanov got beat by Magomed Magomedov. I'm surprised isn't here, but Shamil Amarov, who did get bronze attack Magomedov, should be 
old. He'll have a. He should be having a semifinal matchup against Versuliev. Versuliev did him pretty dirty at the Alans. And I don't know if he can do as much, but I had Nurgan Alexandrov. Back in 2018, he was ranked, like, I want to say top 10. I know he stopped. After the Ali Aliyev, I know he beat um, Ibrahim Ilyasov, who was inexplicably ranked very highly. Who Ilyasov isn't that great now, but back in 2018, when the whole field got sort of um, voided, you know, he did well. But, yeah, I mean, Alexandrov could do okay, but I'm really just banking on Omar first Ilyasov. Semi. So, Syrian... That's really what I'm seeing. But when you get into the nitty gritty of Rush, you could you could always argue, well, uh, couldn't all these guys just go off all at the same time and every one of them win the bracket? I'm like, yeah, that's how depth works. But I'm not stupid, so I'm not going to say that. That would, that would be like me casting the biggest net in the world and catching like a boulder and saying that's just as good as like like a, a salmon. You know, it's not a good analogy, but one's clearly <laughs> much more valuable than the other. But I can't. It's just. It's just. It's not good practice to say. Well, I can't be sure. And like, just there's sometimes it makes more sense to be concise and just say these are the favorites going in, and it's Russia. Anybody could go off, but the likelihood of them doing so is very low. Okay. Um, hey, Tagrul is off. He's back. That's pretty good. At what weight? The Sardogu, or Silent G, fuck. Um, Yashardo. Yashardo. Yeah. Yashar. Yashardo. We, we can call it Yashardogu if you want. I prefer that. I don't I don't prefer it. It's it's, it's an error on my part. Yashardo. Yashar, Yashar, That's Yashar. it. One syllable. Why don't they just completely change their language to, to fit me? Because I've been saying it wrong for years. Shardo. Blame the Byzantine. It all goes back to them. I the Eastern like them. Roman they Empire. Don't. They're stupid. I don't it care about the back. Eastern Roman Empire. I lied to my dad to say that I cared because yeah. It all goes back to Pat Wyman. That's what that's what it is. It all goes Pat back Wyman's to your dad. How he's no, 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 no. Do you remember that there's Fairly Odd Parents, right? And there's that episode where if Timmy had never been born, his dad becomes a dictator and he has this place and his you know, big estate where it's, this is where I keep my trophy if I had one because he never married his mom. Right. Basically, um, I have a big trophy stand somewhere in my room. Uh, it's completely void of any sort of achievement. And that's because my dad didn't pay enough attention to me because he was watching Tides of History for the, the Eastern Byzantine bullshit empire. Fucking, I don't even know. Whatever the shit it is, it's useless to me. Do I get graded on it? No. I don't care. You see how much I don't care? I don't care at all. Does this look like the face of somebody that's mad about the Eastern Bison fuckwads, whatever they are? No. It's feminist to care about the Byzantines, though, because Theodora was actually their their leader. That's (laughs) dumb. Feminism is dumb? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying what you're saying. (laughs) That's not true. Before I get canceled at the start of the new year, uh, that's not true. And I'm going to keep that going. But yeah, uh, Asgarov came back at 74, and he beat Beksad Abdrakmanov. Like, actually beat him, not like a fluke injury or anything. Beksad's going to do MMA now. I think he's on his way out. Well, he's got to qualify. Did he? Is he? He's going to try and qualify. uh, He definitely didn't already qualify. I know, I know that. He lost like 12-7 or 12-9 to Kajimarad. Which lines up a really interesting thing for Azerbaijan uh, moving forward, what they do with Azgarov and Gadziev, because <sighs> Ali Pash, Umar Pashayev, who's Bulgaria's big dog now, um, he's a Chechen transfer, he beat up Azgarov, and then you know who he beat up in the finals? Uh, Nestor Taffer. <laughs> Well, if Nestor, here's the simple thing. To Gruel, got beat by To Gruel, beat Backside. Backside beat JB. Back, JB beat David Taylor. DT beat Yazdani. Yazdani beat McCoy. McCoy beat Karimi. 
No, Nikoyev beat Jaden, who beat Karimi. Karimi beat Sharifov, who beat, beat Snyder. Snyder. Who beat Sajalayev. Who beat Sajalayev. So, yeah, uh-huh. it's pretty simple. It all comes back to so, uh, the So, long story. Long story short, it all goes back to Nestor Taffer. Nestor Taffer. But, in such a way. Yeah, Georgie Salava did. Um, he's solid. He destroyed. Oh, he gave Hasevek Zamalov a good match. He blew out Yakub Gore um, in the semis. And then there's another big result from the uh, Pelicone. Trying to think. Or it wasn't Pelicone, it was the. No. No. Uh, yeah, Doe. Can you pull it up? Because I want to cover it now. UWW doesn't have the uh, like the results page for Yasher Doe for this year. Where they do, and it's a separate page. Nope, they don't have that. Wait. They have the results article. I said they even have that? Tim something about it. And he's like, basically just, basically just wait. I think that's just for the streaming, but I saw... Oh, did anything happen? Oh, Miles Martin won the um, Delane. And we had um, a Shelton Mack won Kaju Mack made off. I think we've got like rank number 12. Shelton Mack won over Vladislav Andreev, which is not a H2P. joke. To be honest with you. H2P, baby. All right. Yeah, I can't Let's find anything here. on the uh, yeah, Dasher results. Just... Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's literally right there official result you can see the but you can't find the results of the tournament when they're right in front of your big nose ridiculous for me to say you have a big deal it's not derogatory it's so simple that's that's how hate speech works it's it's voided if you are a member of that group it's never racist to do an italian accent you're a wop See, nothing. It's fine. Now, if I, <laughs> I could, I could say something else that is objectively racist based off of context. It's the Italian word for eggplant, which again, contextually, is bad. Would get me canceled. All right. I'm just looking through Let's Ivan's Twitter feed. Who... Really? He's usually where I go for results oh on things that I can't find the page. Look at this. Edishrish Vili got beat out by Kasalov, right? And then Georgi Vangelov beat him 2 2 in the semis. And Georgi won the whole thing. He beat um, I see. <laughs> Thomas Gilman last year at um, the Dan Koloff. That's really good. Because we have. Uh, of Georgi sort of felt, wasn't ranked at the end of the year. Not You don't sort of not be ranked. You are, you aren't. Red. Oh, you're out. Quite simple. And then... Bek Bulatov's up Kasala. at seven. Yeah, for Uzbekistan. He looked pretty good. Up in he's going to he's gonna do the Asian qualifier. I mean, I'm not going to... He'll be at 65, who's he, right? He's not even qualified from Asia. He'll be at 65, yeah. He's like 5'5", five, five, I think. That means he's nothing. Short. He could just be a little unit, little fire hydrant. You go 74 being 5, five, five. five 180 guys have you seen? Here's the tr- tricky thing because we know holistically from the career, Beck Bulatov's better than Kasanov. We can say that, matter of fact, but off of the recent head to heads and everything, Kasanov is number 10 while Ilias is number 17. So I'd like to see Uzbekistan goes with from there. Um, Hamza Alaka. So he. Beat Tyler Graf last year, the Medved. He's a junior level guy, but I didn't expect him. He beat Recep Topal, the Ooh, guy that beat Idrisov at Euros. Recep? Um, Recep was eight, but he's been like top 10. Here. It's just how everything sort of felt. Before Worlds, right. he was like 14. Or I'm going to check. Chitrin was there, but yeah, a hey, Chitrin, um, Chitrin was there at sixteen one, but he lost first round to Recep Octus six five. But uh, Octus beat YBR at the beginning of the year. Chitrin, Octus, uh, Octus. He was like really low ranked for you, yeah. Before Worlds, it's just because he beat he just beat YBR. That was 
This is why. Um, the earlier in the year, it's YBR's one loss at um, uh, the World Cup. That's why. So, um, I don't, it's, here's the thing. Like, I'm not going to be super stringent on Javi Kumar winning at 61 and beating Sanayev. Because we both know where they're going to be when it comes time for them to be where they need to be. They're both going to be 61 or 57s. So it's not super being like, oh, what's this mean for them moving forward? Like, it means they don't want to cut weight. It's like the start of the year. Hey, Boris Novotchkov was back. And not fat, which is crazy because he was fat like six he months wasn't... ago. Okay. In his Bellator fight, he was fat. Fat, <laughs> fat? He was fat for Boris Novotchkov. He usually has no body fat. He looked like out of shape and soft. And he, he fought like he was out of shape. He lost. He lost his pro debut. To nobody. <laughs> to like nobody. Like two guy, right? Yeah, somebody bad, and he looked terrible. Awful. Yeah, but he and lost 3-2 to Opon. He yeah, lost 3-2 so to Opon Sot. He's wrestling all right. Opon Sot was good, like, five years ago. Is that right? Uh, it was five it's years ago. 2015. He was good. He was good, like, oh, shit. Seven years ago. <laughs> is there any relation to uh, Arbok Sot or my race? Not direct, but it's. Uh, um, I'm gonna go check because I know um, Opon's Tuvin. Before I can't even find him off. on the uh, on the database. Opon Sot. Arbok. I can find him. Opon? I can't. Yeah. I can't find Opon. Yeah, let me, um, before we say anything that would anger people from Russia, because the, um, it's very important that you get these other things right. That's all I've got to say. They're very relevant. Yeah, yeah, he's Tubin. Yep, him and Sot. So it's, it's a last name. Um, a, Pretty common to the area. Did he change his name? Or Some is his name do. different in Russian? Is Opan Sat actually Ken Opan Erdogan? Erdogan? No. No, they changed Oh my god. For, um, Same guy. He's Some guys Erdogan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did not know that. that. Right? With, um, I didn't the know that. Same thing with Name He was Corkin Brown this last year. Yeah. Do you know Salim Yassar's name, right? When what he won the world to Russia? Kaloy Kratoyev. This is news to me. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Hey, um, I didn't think this was going to happen, but Servet Kuskin, right? So the 2014 Euro runner up, he went off at. Then he lost to Hadar Yavuz in the semis, but he beat two Georgian world champs, Skahula Kai and Yakubish Reality. Oh, snap. Big snap. When did yeah, you do that? Here's... At the... In Turkey. Yeah, sure do. Yeah, sure do. Yeah, Skahula Kai is number seven, and Yakubashvili right. really is number 13. Well, Yakubashvili oh, is canceled I... now, because you can't be boring and lose. You could have to be winning all the time if you're boring. So, he's, he's yeah. out. Like Bulatov pinned uh, Rasadine. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice. And then Yavuz beat Mustafayev, Agagusinov Mustafayev, and He's Mustafayev good. beat Kuskin for bronze. Mustafayev, <laughs> Azerbaijan, is that right? Yeah, he's actually Azeri. I know you'd think by like his, his last name and stuff, you'd think he'd be Dagestani, but he's not. Okay. He's a real deal. It's the Y at the end, but it, he was born with the Y at the end. It wasn't added on falsely like Musakayev's new spelling of his name with the, like the Z's and the J's in it. It's an abomination. That shit in there. It's literally just some guy working for UWW put it wrong in the database and they're trying to Probably. save face. So, so we talked about 24. We talked about 74. Um, it's a fantastic weight. Lots of good results here. Umar Pashayev and Salava really showed out. And let's go to 79. This will be the first time we actually see high-level 79s 
for Russia this year. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, two guys got disqualified. It was the first big fight of the year. Do you remember seeing that? I see the video on uh, Ivan's timeline. Well, the Belisi Grand Prix champ would be Tamori. Or brought Sonashvili just won Georgia Nationals, too. <laughs> Over the U23 world champ, Kafrinashvili. That, or about Sonashvili. He's good. He doesn't need to do that sort of shit. You know? Sometimes it make any sense. sense. Duty calls. Sometimes you gotta fight a motherfucker. It happens. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no. It'd be better. When have you ever seen Saj Alive punch somebody? He you know what, I've, ne- you know what I've never seen? You know what I've never seen Saj Alive do correctly? A heel hook. He tried. He tried his best. Guy saw it. I he he was having so much fun. I'm so he happy. He didn't know for which him. leg lock he was doing. I think he's like, do I straighten it out? Do I hold the foot? Do I hold the knee? Like he was doing all him of them. Him and Gadsy. Just just think about <laughs> that. Think about how much of a, a great little group that is. Him, Gadsy, Gazzy, Kurban Aliyev. They're just boys. They're they're just guys being dudes. Like how can how can you like try and be What's angry better than this? Those, especially Kurbanaliev? It's really hard when you see Kurbanaliev. He looks like a little troika. To be honest with you, um, you know, that there, strains out of Oklahoma State sometimes. Who was a red singlet in the fight? Zachary. He got, he got red. Which one looks more like a dad? Oh, yeah, uh, of course he did. Was red amazing. singlet looks more like a dad. Erbot. Erbot doesn't have hair. Is that right? Oh, he's bald as fuck. Yeah, dude. He's, okay. He is a dad. Through and through. He looks like Artie Buko. Urbots on Ashvili sucks at fighting, and Zakharayev is kind of good. He dropped him. I've seen that much. <laughs> That's what I like. Fight. But hey, who won? Who's important? Abu Bakar. Abakarov. Number 10 guy in the world. He's nice with it. Hey, Gadzi Magomedov's back at 79 for the Oregon. I'm so happy. He's Kyle Dake's only loss in the past two years. Oh, and it wasn't a loss. He beat the brakes off of Kyle. And yeah. it, I tried to figure out the differences in the match between the win and the loss, between losing pretty big and then teching him. And honestly, it just looked like Kyle got a lot stronger. Yeah. Say, say what you will about that. He looked a lot stronger. <laughs> That was my big takeaway. Functional pattern. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm getting interviewed by the guy who's making a documentary on Dake. Apparently, he's been making it since Ooh. like senior year of NCAA's. Oh, yeah. Gregory something. I don't know. I forget his name. But he wanted to interview me because I think like he document wrote... every time he shits too. What's that? Vows of a champion. That might be it. I don't know. Bowels of a champion. Bowels <laughs> of a champion. How to eat your way to success. I can't remember where I saw. There's some guy who has like a variation. And he's a really big time bencher. Like, uh, very, very good. But uh, like he would be like, I was, I was a small fry walking around at 270. And then I remember, um, you also go at this hardcore gym. And we, we'd get like five McMuffins a day. And then I just roll them all up into one big McMuffin, and just the, the glue was the mayonnaise, and then I just eat that before and after lift. So eat like ten McMuffins so for breakfast, basically is his breakfast. And then after, like for dinner, he'd have two pizzas and roll them in olive oil, like just like de- roll, like pour a whole thing on there just just to gain weight. It he'd be me like three thirty. Just yeah, it's gross. Me too. So it'd be like three thirty, and then he just like n- not even eat, like eat like a normal person, and then he'd lose like forty pounds. He'd eat a whole person. Ripped. He really was. It's he's just like adult. it's disgusting when you think if your diet has to involve use mayonnaise as glue That's for true. your gross. <laughs> there should be no glue in your food at all. And- no Roll your here. fucking pizzas in olive oil. Like he's just like it's not like it's not like a, a, it's not like Olive Garden, which is a joke. It's disgusting. Olive Garden's not real Italian food, but you know where they put out the olive oil with the bread. All good Italian restaurants do that. 
You don't do that with a fucking pizza. All right? You don't just scoop. People pat the grease off. You don't just. This guy puts the shit on. What does Domino's give you? Like garlic butter juice? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's pretty gross. He's like, don't put it. Don't throw it away. No. I've got a meet in three months. I've got to be strong. I'm like, you're going to be in the fucking hospital in three years, but whatever, dude. Um, yeah, but I just remember that every now and then. And I really go against working out. You, Selim Yassar, he won it at 86. He looked really tough. He beat um, the Bulgarian, Magomedov, Bulgarian Chechen, who beat Hasanov, who's number nine. So we're going to put Yassar in the top ten probably. Hey, Miles Amin, I don't know what we're going to do. He lost. Hey, it was rough. Fatih Erden. It's okay. It's all right. I, I Dude, don't really look. rate. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Look at this. Aslan Beck Alborov, quarterfinal. 2 1 win over Irakli Mitsatori. Ha! <laughs> Yikes. Okay. He number- beat Kyle Snyder pretty recently, so it's really not that bad. But it in like 2018, summer That's 2018. Two years ago, it's not bad. Uh, no, he, wrestling he is better than bad. Dude, I'm never going to, I'm not going to watch that match because I know exactly what it looks like and it looks awful. Oh, well, Mitzi Turi. And then Marsh Kishvili oh, beat Zubera 4 3, and then Marsh forfeited Dalboroff in the finals. <coughs> oh, dying. Georgian, this Georgian on Georgian crime. Who's gonna what? go at uh 86? Oh, Dato, yeah, no doubt. Beach wrestling world champ. Everyone national. Oh, they might do a special wrestle off. Sorry, tough beat GV. Sorry, tough also beat Magomed Ibrahimov. Who Magomed Ibrahimov losing that that throwy dad charm that he had. Back in the day. Back when his teching raised as Donnie. You're hurting me with these with these results. I got Mitzi Turi down. I got GV down. Whatever. It's rough. It's rough. You gotta you gotta get thick, calloused skin like mine. I don't know if people need to see my hands again, but they do. They might need to. Oh, I'm soft. <laughs> I'm emotionally fragile. <laughs> what the heck? Rahimov lost in the semifinals to Tanju Gamichi. He got pinned. Who? Is the, he's a Turkish backup. What? Yeah. He'd still be quizzed. Yeah. I, I'm okay with it. Oh my god. Are we really... talking big, big yeah. Rahimov or little Rahimov? Or it's, that's Rachmanov. It's a little one, right? Rahimov's the big guy. He yeah, does throw. He's thrower. Jamalan Magam made off won it so that's what we got for that do you have the uh pelicone pulled up i'm looking at it right i do now. kyle dake he destroyed the mirror to us wasn't even a match it was just it really wasn't and then curry maga made off got you know bruised around Nurikov beat him Dake attacked him can't really do anything about it. did kaysanov beat franklin gomez that's crazy but you know why? Because he's an Olympian. He's a world medalist now. Probably now because uh, Fed- Kajif is no go. Mitch Feinsilver oh. got a win over uh, Ines. Uslu. Uslu. That's a win. That's nice. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, you know what's not great? Kermega made off tech to Logan Massa. That was great for me. Why? Because he's a, a Russo-Hungarian. Those are my boys. All two of them. <laughs> the hey, bad one. James the good one. Yunus Amami, the World Bronze Medalist, tacked James Green for Team that's, 5. That's, that's okay. I think. That's not okay. I like James Green, but that's like... No, but Amami's better. Amami right is now. hammer. And then Amami lost to Fasil Uryumaz, the Turkish national champ, who was fifth at U23 Worlds. Kind of janky, but like not really good tough. That's not a good loss uh, to take. Seventy four, and he was he giving beat... us a ball off of one. Wait, so this guy beat Nurikov. Who? The U twenty three fifth placer beat Nurikov. 
Yeah, and he beat Demirtas at Nationals. Oh, so he's good. No, he's, he's good. He's just he's not... legit. I don't know how to describe how he wrestles. Very stingy. J.O. Bajarang. Bajarang. Took it. Part two. It was a good match. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what did you, you know, think about the match? call when uh he when Jordan Oliver was on his back and the ref let it go for a minute? <laughs> you can't stalemate that, can you? If the guy's like on his back and you could potentially pin him, you don't stalemate that, do you? In freestyle? No, you don't. You shouldn't. In folks, they wouldn't stalemate it. No. I, I saw a lot of people complaining. I'm like, are, is this just because it's an American, or do you really think that's how it should be called? I want to see uh wrestling quoter and uh and brock height go at it because they always talk about rules yeah, apparently know. they know the rules why is it kyong il yang ranked in the top 10 athletes of the decade sorry 2014 kench kashmili is just as good i'm like yeah you told me like, the one where he didn't place at the toxic cup <laughs> that one oh happens, happens to everyone <laughs> yeah that's the same guy that only lost to goy Gurriev. um you know, beat Higuchi, beat Haji Aliyev, beat Nurislam Sanaya, beat Vladimir Dubov. And you're telling me that, that guy fresh off a of world title in 2015 and his Olympic title in 2016, that's, they're the same. Joey McKenna had a two-point match with Bajrang. So. Yeah, then he had a Good go on Joey McKenna. Zayn. He had a 10-5 loss to Zayn, so I mean, and you got take getting beat up by Basil Shuttar and then he pinned him because Shuttar tried to throw him and pinned himself. <laughs> Did you see Arashanyan got fit, that kid we talked up that beat Shuttar in Nationals? He lost to... Oh, oh God. He lost Kill to Kiliskaya. It's not very good. Not a good loss. Why don't they just... Why don't they get Kai on fucking Nutrisystem and just put him out? Anybody's better than Kilixali. Apparently not Arashanian, but anybody. Getting J O beat Arashanian 7 0, which is nice. Nice for him. 7 yeah, 0 for J O. Let's see if any. Oh, Ace and Poor beat. Uh, Ace, Shupra beat Ace and Poor again. First match was back in 2015. That was a good one they had. I'm sad that Oganesian isn't Ogunesian good. Four. I wanted him to be a uh-huh. thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really not important about what you want. I think that's the, the takeaway. 61, Javi Kumar beat Nuri Slam Sanayev. That's all that matters. He won the bracket. They're both 57. You'll expect to see them in Tokyo. Yeah. We talked about prison strength Joe Cologne, how he was robbed of an exposure on the edge against Thomas Gilman and the win and a top 10 ranking. But uh, I'm not better about it. He happens. beat Stefan Micic handedly. Then Fix beat... Or Gilman beat Fix and uh, Lou. And that's the bracket. That's a good win for, a good win for Lou. One oh, of his fit. best wins in a while. Uh, Lou's best win is Zolda Shbekov. So this is like his second best win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is because uh, then he lost to back in Asian Championships. He lost to Bain and Mason Porter. Pretty tight one, to be honest with you. Those Chinese guys. Strong. Pretty tough. They're all jacked. Yeah, very. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I haven't seen a fat one yet. I haven't seen a Boris Novachkov type. Even, no even Jai Wei. made those weird videos. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, I've been on mountains. And- hitting the bag with nunchucks and his little bunny is running around. Yeah. I mean, dude, Stefan Micic took out uh, Yatsenko 2017 World Bronze. The fact that uh, Joe Cologne pinned Yatsenko beat Micic, I want... It sounds bad to just say, oh, Cologne could be the guy to win it. Trials, but he could. I mean, he really should. Tough freaking weight you've got domestically. Domestically, Dayton Fix, Thomas Gilman. Uh, Joe Cologne, everybody's coming for your neck. And Spencer Lee is supposed to be the guy that's going to come through all this with a strap around his... Or what do they give a hat? Or what do they give this time? Uh, stop, a stop sign. <laughs> I don't know. A plaque? I think you get a plaque. No, they, they, just, they just send you off to the, the a shitty, A shitty hat you have to wear, the, your, your final X hat. Even if you're not a hat person, they make you wear a hat. <laughs> so good. Final X! I like Final X. I still like the hat. making a world. 
You should give uh, them a huge trophy be- like they do in Pride. Good. I just give them money. You give yeah, them money. money. <laughs> money would actually be relevant. So Valencia Tech, uh, the 2018 World Runner Up. Yeah. 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 So he's very, good. Very nice. He's nice. almost tech to Deepak for you know, the World Runner Up. Shout out to uh, uh, Coach uh, Jay Lavalley, who uh, I think coaches Ethan Ramos down in Maryland or wherever he's at. J.O. J.O. Wrestling. The guy who's always doing yeah. throws and stuff. Yeah, pretty cool. Then Ern beat Sebastian Fuentes after beating Miles Amin. Heartbreaking stuff, honestly. Though Pat Downey beat Ethan Ramos 9-5, so I don't like... Pat Downey's style of wrestling. I, I, how do you feel about Pat? I think if I didn't know anything about him as a person and I watched the matches that he won, mm-hmm. I'd be kind of into him because he did throw... Archaia, Archaia, like a bunch of times. Okay. He was losing, and they just started tossing him. So that was cool, but okay. I hate him otherwise. <laughs> it's just like the most Maryland person possible. And I've I've heard things. I've heard things I didn't I didn't quite care for. So my opinion, my mind's kind of kind of made up about him. He's he's a doctor. doctor. We're not doctors. Dr. Downey. Next, let me give a review for 97 kilos. Mohammadian, five five bags of popcorn. He just he tagged a couple world medalists, three time world Olympic champ, number five guy, like, 92. Your uh, golly. And a European so, championship. He put 12 points up on Bo Nickel. It's probably pretty good. Pretty good wrestler. Your galley put 12 on Bo. Yeah. Ugh. Gordon Ryan put 12 on Bo. Yeah, he could. <laughs> when did Gordon Ryan say, like, I hate everybody. I hope all the, the wimps and pussies get killed. That was like three weeks ago. Remember After that? Bo well, put the that fear of mankind ago? in him. It was like a month ago. I don't know. Something like that. We definitely didn't see it. I'm going to see this Bo. I'm pulling up Bo, your galley, right now. Why is Bo 13-12 with your galley? I thought I thought your, your galley was leading him 12-7 with like a minute left. <laughs> what? Oh, gosh. Good thing I have Mahamadi in my life. Oh, God. I'm looking at heavyweight and... Uh... There's only really one result. Hayden Zilmer lost to Kanye Dorado. Mm-hmm. Hayden Zilmer lost to who? Uh, the World Runs Runners from 2018, the the Cuban transfer, Italian. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Kanye He's cool. Hayden Zilmer beat Valery Andritsev, the big Ukrainian that does nothing. He really Good does win. nothing, even by my standards. It's, it's hard yeah. to beat people who do nothing. Yeah, and they're also huge. All right, I your galley put up. You know, let's let's uh, your galley really should honestly be a three time NCAA champ by that logic. I at think he Tulsa could National, do one Tulsa Nationals title at the very least from that performance. Did but Bo if he wins the Tulsa World? Nationals, he's gonna have to wrestle for the U.S. You know that. That's how it works. You, you, he you, have you, you a, come here, you stay here. You, technically, don't American. all international wrestlers have NCAA eligibility? Um, if they move here. There's an age cutoff. There's, there's an like age cutoff? There's an age cutoff. Isn't there some like, 30-something-year-old guy it, wrestling for ASU? Yeah, I, get I hear stories around all the time, but that was like he did, hadn't finished his eligibility while he was a college athlete or something uh, like that. But if you're in your 30s and you just start school, I mean, nope. But if you're going to JUCO and then you can fudge some documents, then absolutely you can. Or if you're Ray Which Gucci is, after the 2016 Olympics, you can go to Penn State. I remember when I fooled the whole world with that. It was brilliant. It still happens to. You know, I'm gonna be like, 
I had coaches and stuff be like, what? Why wasn't I recruiting him? I'm like, well, probably two things. He speaks Japanese. Uh, he's an Olympic runner-up. And uh, you're stupid. Three things. You're stupid. You know, it's a, it's a tripartite model of um, why you're a fucking dummy. This, that's how you know it's smart. So it's Zara important Bilov. that people know. Who? Amir Zare. Yeah. Billy All Mahov. Makov, if you will. Oh, uh, Bilal Makov? Yeah. Three timer. Three time world champ. Makov got lost 5 3 to Zaire. Zaire has been on the, just a, this crazy upward trajectory since beating. Has he lost? Beating, Does Mason Paris beat him? Not at all. No, he lost to Gazaev. He oh, lost to Gazaev. Batras beat him. Zaev, yeah. Batras so. beat him, and Batras is going to be at the Oregon. But he's beaten Rakimov. He teched Quiz off of pushouts. He beat Gino Petrofili, the reigning three time world champ. He beat another three time world champ. I mean, the depth that you're having at the top side of heavyweight is like legitimately you would want to watch this weight. It's kind of good it's... right now. How many? Any other combat sports can you say that about con- consistently? None of them. There's like three good heavyweights in boxing, yeah. I think, and that's about it. Wild, like uh, Stick, Fury. Don't they have like some Cuban who's like Ortiz, 15 years old? Ortiz, Ortiz no. is like you say he's like 28, but he's like a dad. Look at this. Look at this top ten. So we have Petrushvili, a three timer. A Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, another three time three time one Olympic. Kazria who's a Uregan champ who beat That's a ghoul. Um Makoff is a three timer. Three time world champ. Olympic it was an Olympic bronze he's an Olympic runner up now in twenty twelve because of what happened with um drugs. Mm, yeah. Kazayev. We talked about him ad nauseum. It's insane. Sair, who we talked about beating Petrish Freely beating Mac off, being Gwiz. Kotsianiski, world bronze medalist. Rakimov, world bronze medalist. Okay, the top eight is okay. Yeah. I got a bit too that's off. A, that's the NCAA podium right there. Okay, but look at this. Yadula Mahebi. Oh, man. He does. He's, he's like super Yusuf Hamida. Just, Dude, just that's your Mirzaev. From Kazakhstan, won bronze at uh, Mateo Pelikon. He's yeah. terrible. Yeah, <laughs> he really, it's, really is. it's not fun to watch. <laughs> Did you remember when? Uh, remember when Mike Krells? So Tony Nelson had just graduated, right? And they needed a new heavyweight. Mike Krells ended up being like a two-time AA, and this was yeah. like the first time he tried. Out. And I was like looking at him, like Mike Krells is, he's decent. It's checked and like. Uh, Two minutes. My particular side. <laughs> it's the same one. So on the subject of your, your boy GV, 2017, you know, we beat Georgia Gaev, where it's like, well, this kid's very, very legit. What's going to happen with him moving forward? He loses off of, like, a bad, like, he decided to chest wrap, but he, but he forgot to make sure the other guy exposes and not him. Oh, uh, let, let me pull this up really Columbia? quick. I see it. What? They lost to a Kazakh. In at Mateo Pelicone. Well, he lost to Pedro Jesus Mejias Rodriguez from Venezuela. <laughs> About as bad as it gets. <laughs> what? What? That's as bad as it gets. You know what's not as bad as it sounds, but bad? Uh, remember when Sargush lost to. Uh, that was a lot of wild for a Oh, God. Okay, here's what I'm looking at here for Jeeve. The Jeeve. Jeevester. Ask the dark Jeeve. horse of 57 kilograms. <laughs> Factula Almente. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I'm down okay. on this, I think. Jeeve's oh, bad. I admit it. I still like him. Jeeve's <laughs> not. GV was GV lost GV was the European Games runner up at heavy. <laughs> Last second. <laughs> oh man, he beat like a sixth guy. <laughs> now he's not ranked. Ninety seven. 
<laughs> oh wow! Well, don't you just don't you just hate what to watch it? Because I sure do. Honestly, ninety-seven is cool sometimes. Bad like heavyweights are cool. But Bad probably eat up heavyweight cool. Really good 90s zones like Mahamadi and they're ridiculous. They're really something else to watch. Such a lie of great. How much do you want to see? Um, well, Gazi's slated at 74, so is Amal off Kurbanali of um, not BF anymore. Who else is a world champ that's supposed to be there? There's four at 74. Bam, Samal off. Uh, Let me Kibrana. pull up that. Uh... Gassy Maga made off. Screenshot. Yeah. Hold your horses. Kurbanaliyev, Zabala, Gassy Maga made off, and that's it. Sidikov, that's right. uh, I mean, actually going to be there. Jamalov's going to be there. Uh, Such- Suchkov is going to be there. Timur Bijoyev, our favorite guy, is going to be there. Timor's there. Timor is allegedly there. What, where else would he be in, doing Duncan. nothing? Because that's what he's going to be doing in the matches. He did stuff on the back What's side. What's he going to do? Get, get an arm drag or like a front headlock to a to a to a go behind the old Timor Bezoyev special. Put you in the grave. We'll do it once. He, he did. <laughs> he did. Run, Gads and Maga made off three years ago. I, still think I like uh, if if Sidikov isn't wrestling, or he is. He should I, be. I think he's not. Um, he was on the bracket, but I think he's not yeah, wrestling. At least, but if he is wrestling, he's going to do fine. But I they, think the, I, the big guy, the big guys, always get a release. I kind of think either. I don't know. It's tough to pick. I don't think Kurban Ali is going to win the well, weight, unfortunately. Um, well, but I kind of like. Be surprised by that? I kind of like Zamalov to win the weight. Is that weird? I, feel like he's on the, I, on the I didn't like how he looked at U23s at all. I also don't like his chances against this quality of field with Gazi again. Yeah, but Gazi not going to When was the last time he wrestled? The Kadrov Cup. When was that? A few months ago? The, um, November. He destroyed Alan Zaziev. Okay, so Gazi so, Magomedov yeah. is probably the favorite thing because Sabalov didn't look that good at Alonso. He beat James Green, but James Green is losing to Imami, so that's yeah. not it doesn't mean as Imami's much as not, I thought. Imami is like a really good talent. We always have to take these things in context. It's like before we label someone as bad. Sure, it's just, but it's like Sabalov had a close match with James Green, and he had to come back in, and then you know Imami just teched him. Yeah. You know, and then he also had that bad Styles match do with, make uh, matchups. So, was it tumor? Tumor or tear? Because how much? Yeah, how much? He beat. He beat how much, yeah, how much? Um, how much work do you see uh, Sabalov do hand fighting wise? Not it depends much. on match to match. <laughs> how much work have you seen him do hand fighting wise outside of slapping a guy in the face? He's mostly slappy. Yeah, he's not really much of a guy to set up his shots with his hands. It's more so of a timing thing, gaining off that center line for his knee pull single or his fireman's defense kick. isn't all that guys, good either. I mean, it is good, but compared to the elite, it's not like his best thing. Yeah, know? he can. It, you, you got a representative heuristic because you just remember the times when he's on suspect defense, but also he's the guy that's beaten Sidikov and really taken the best to deep water. So, I mean, like. It is what it is, and he sort of stands up too, so it makes you give the idea that he is. But I mean, so oh, it's very solid. I just, I just really, honest to God, don't want to ha- be having to say Team or Brazil if twenty twenty Eureka champ. Oh God, depressing. I like his defense. I just, I don't, I don't want to have to sit through it the whole time. I'm always happy when guys are able to get those heavy hands of him off of. Him. So. Eighty six is looking looking good. Looking really nice. good. Off Kuts- Kuriglyev. Valiev. Ramazan. Valiev. Masalaliev. Moose is going to... Holy, holy shit. Have people watched... Kuriglyev. Have you watched Valiev? Have you? Masalaliev? No, I haven't watched him yet. I like his name, though. Arsenali. That's pretty sick. He's even better to watch when he's actually doing stuff. Like, he is... 
it's hard to it's hard to give you the feel for it, but he's one of the most smooth guys I've ever watched. Like if that makes sense, or is like Vladislav is just God, he'll punch you, he'll headbutt you, <laughs> he'll, he'll headbutt you. But there's so he's so much body. Like he's not like Levan Barry and Nidzi. Like like he's he's not a blob. <laughs> he is, he's just a block of muscle, man. I, he's he had a rough end of the year, but I like Vladislav Filiev. But Nifonov is the best guy here. He's put big points on the board against. Um, Malia. they're always close, but it's clear that I mean, it's, unless yeah. Nifonov's not in it, it should be Nifonov. And Nifonov's Dude, not out here losing to Baranowski. Kurgulev, Kurgulev didn't lose him. Kurgulev lost him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Nifonov destroyed Baranowski. But um, did you remember um, Nifonov hit four pointer on Ramazanov at Nationals? Like he just beat his ass. Who else do we? Oh, um, but I see if it's going to be at ninety-seven. So we'll be interested in that. And Radik Valiyev is going to be at seventy-nine. Who? Which means? Oh, imagine, imagine Khalil Minov, Ahmed Gadzimagomedov, and Radik Valiyev. Just oh, and Kubezdi. Kubezdi is going to be there too. Oh my god. Let's just get some context on this. We didn't so, talk about sixty-five yet, so let me go get my laptop charger because we're not—we're definitely not done. So. Okay, we'll on sixty-five. All right, let me get this. So you'll have the number two guy, the number three. You're probably going to have the number four, number seven, and Gadzi Nabia is going to be there. So two, three, six, seven, and to see Nakayev will probably be there too because he's qualified, and it's going to be insane. Oh, and Gatsy back and made off. Uh, the champ is back. Ridiculous. For uh... cool. All right, Gadzron Rashidov is there. He's the world champ. He did very well at Worlds. Not even like a weak bracket. It. The toughest bracket you could get. Takuto Oguro, Haji Leif. and there's this guy. He's a two-time World Olympic champ. So Slen Romanov. He's on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be the match and what they're going to be looking for besides the Olympic spot. Who else do we got there, Ed? What's the bracket look like? Muslim Sajilayev, uh, Sayin Kazirik, who was Wait, uh, Alon's finalist. Shiraev was the finalist. Kazirik was also at Alon's, though. Kazirik beat Zayn, and Kazirik got bronze. Right. right. Ahmed Shikai. Yeah. Kazirik, so let's get some. Oh, my God. Oh my God! Let's run through all who's going to be ranked or who's ranked that's competing. Rashidov, number one. Romanov, number four. Kular, number seven. Chikayev, number nine. Is Mutalimov going to be there? He is number three on the list. Number eleven in the world. Rashid is it... Julian yeah. Gurjanov yep. is also here. Thirteen. Kazirik, fourteen. Julian's number sixteen. And Islam Dudayev, good money is that right? Ely is going to be. Um, Islam's been in and out of the rankings. Here's bronze in 2017 Russian Nationals. He beat Victor Rasidin this year. Did Dasha Shiraz Stepanov qualify? He's not on the list. On They're the not list. doing the Mindy Ishvili? They, are they doing the Mindy Ishvili? So that was the qualifier that they had last year? Don't know. Don't know. No indication. That's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah, Bekhan Goygariev is here. Goygariev's there? Yeah. So is Chikaya. Yeah. Goygariev's... Uh, I have low expectations for him, so I can be excited, though, to say that. So, Rashidov, <laughs> Chikaya, Romanov. That's your big three, right? Kulor. Kulor. I don't see Kulor. Kulor. Oh, number two, duh. <laughs> Or is the is the returning runner up? And you remember what happened last year? Nope. It was with like five seconds left, and he gets him towards the edge. He loads up Chukayev and like tosses him feet to back. And it was super controversial because they still gave Chukayev the points, but it was um, after time had expired. But yeah, that's fair. Mm. Stani in Kresniarsk against Matuvin. 
Tough. Tough stuff. But now that you're seeing my, that you're hearing my disembodied voice, uh, just just let me know if you need any other professional services supplied in this capacity, like uh, mm, guidance, ASMR, ASMR. Um, tell, oh, usually when I mean guidance, I mean telling you to kill other people in my name. That's what I mean. That's, that's good too. Except telling me to kill doing my bidding. ASMR. Doing my bidding is really. The purpose here okay holistically you know we're, we're, we're trying to create an organization based off of innovation excellence and integrity and part of you got to spill some blood to make some money all right Our organization which is the one spilling the blood is the fight site if people don't know we haven't talked about that yet yeah. that's who we're here it, on behalf of <laughs> oh we, we we have a patreon right that's right we do have a patreon page it's patreon slash fight site and if you want us to talk about other things other than whatever we want to talk feet. about, you have to pay us. You can talk about feet. You feet, can talk yeah. about my feet. We can send pictures of feet. Um, you know, feet are like the the foundation of the body and the soul. The base. That's why. That's why we. That's why we look at feet all day, not for other reasons. Honestly, I fucking hate feet. To be honest with you, if you disgust me. Feet. Yeah. I your eyes are fucking my, huge. I like my eyes. And my eyelashes. My eyelashes are very long. You probably can't see, but they're they're very long. No, I don't I don't like my feet. Where's my foot? Where's my feet? Put that thing uh, away. <laughs> uh, no, I just don't like the feet, the foot because evolutionarily wise, feet are basically just prehensile hands at the bottom of uh, the leg and basically what they were is they're not really super well adjusted for transference of energy so if you look at an animal's foot like look at a bird's foot look at a cat's foot and look at where it's sort of like that j design so where it strikes the energy transfers up through and then you're able to get it through and it's a clean transferal of energy right human foot looks like fucking this basically i can't see you, my so. head, you understand <laughs> But you understand what I'm talking about, where it's this broader surface area. Um, mechanically, it's really not all that great. I don't like feet for that reason. J feet are better for that because they transfer energy better through the gate, and you can put more power through the ground. But I'm not recommending everybody do cybernetic enhancement so that they can have you know normal and what I think are biomechanically superior feet. <laughs> I just fucking hate feet. You know. Disgusting. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to do the podcast backwards. And we'll yeah. actually have this section first where we talk about 65 and feet. And this will be the intro. And then it'll cut into me doing the intro again of the next. It'll be like avant-garde. It's 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 artistic. It's um, um, the out, things out, out of out order. Second. Cut, the, cut out the second intro. I don't need you to be fucking Christopher Nolan. I just want us... We don't need this out right away because it will make us look better if our predictions go well, but don't do two intros. One intro and then go into, I don't know, talking about the precursor to 57, like Vito, because Vito's going to get us good. Or do we want to do, yeah, whatever. If people listen in, they're going to hear about feet. So feet, 65, Vito, 57. And then how much can you splice the audio so that we can get um, Italy somewhere in between? Because that was a big USA thing. Well, I'm not going to move anything around. Really, I'll just, I'm either cutting things off the beginning or the end, or I'm putting these two clips in different orders because I, I don't really have the time or the competency to be moving stuff around all that, all that much. Julian can do it, but this is short notice for Julian to do that. He'd also have to listen to the whole show to figure out when that is. And I don't want to do that to him. Yeah, we couldn't just give them timestamps because that wasn't going to listen to the whole thing. But people saw my hands. Yeah. They saw your feet. my own I podcast. Sure that's important. <laughs> I do. Sometimes. Do you listen to these? Yeah, just to go see if there's any cues I need to work on or if there's any um, points of interest I need to have. It's just like doing a presentation, essentially. That's what all this is. It's towards building soft skills. That's why I can always... It's good to give um, media coverage because we're the best at it. But the other thing of it is, if you're putting out content on a consistent basis, it's just reinforcement of skills that you need. 
not like this. I'm going to go change to what I'm just like, you're basically just running a mile every day. You're going to get better at running either way, you know? So podcast today keeps the doctor away. It, de- it definitely does not. They say. Probably the <laughs> yeah. If you go to, if you listen to calm down. Okay. Let's uh, be done. I'm gonna go edit some- All right. I think we're done. Yeah, we're done. Good stuff. Go to yeah, fightsite.com. Go to patreon.com slash fightsite. Go to our YouTube channel, which is the fight site. You're probably on our YouTube channel if you're listening to this because we're not going to yeah, put it anywhere this, else. Yeah. So you're already there. Uh, go to the website. Follow us on Twitter. Follow Seth on Twitter. At Seth yeah, Pitar. Sure. Follow Seth on Twitter. Don't follow me. I don't do anything. Follow Seth. You really, you really just put out content because that's what I used to do. Yeah. I just put out pure content. I don't tweet. We have interaction. You really I'll reply to stuff, not... but I don't really tweet. It's really not ideal for the, the human psyche to have that much social interaction in the, in the formatting that it is. There was a study that it looked at um, increase of scores on measures of antisocial behaviors and um, ideations and narcissism. And people that had really high social media usage, then it's a variable ratio of reinforcement, schedule of reinforcement. That's the science of it. <laughs> but who cares? Love it. Love the science. Love, it. Love the lessons. All right. Yeah. Goodbye. Cruel world. I'm going to end this podcast now. Bye-bye. Do other stuff. Pod-